a newborn baby, we can in one sense see a state of no thingness. Mm. But somehow we want to impose on that baby yeah. a state of strength, of a, a sense of personality, an ego, a, yeah. a determination to, to be. To reflect us. Yes. Why does that why does that come up? <coughs> why does it come up like that? Why, why because it does. <laughs> it's just the game, you know, it's just the play of beingness. That it arises as a tiny child that is totally uh, boundless, yeah. and then a, a parent, let's say, in simple terms, then wants it to be like them, mm. and so teaches it to become an individual. Yes. That's the way it happens. I did this. Sorry? I did that. Well, you I didn't do it, but I you did. didn't do it. You aren't a parent. There is no parent oh. that does it. You're, you are completely without responsibility. There is nobody responsible. There's no such thing as responsibility except in the dream of the idea or the belief that you are a person that can choose to take action. Nobody chooses anything. It just happens. What happens, happens. Nobody does it. There is nobody. One of the accusations that people have about what is communicated here is that I'm telling people to be spiritually lazy. I'm saying to people, there's nothing that you can do. I absolutely am not saying there's nothing you can do, because that would imply that there's a you that can't do anything. That has no connection with what's being said here. What's being said here is that there is no one. And if a child is taught to become uh, an individual and to negotiate with the world, that is the absolute expression of oneness. It's absolutely, it's this absolute wholeness arising as a child being taught. It's not only that we impose our individuality on children, we impose it on everything. So the separate seeker only sees through the veil of being separate. So when the separate seeker looks at something, a tree or a wall or a person, they see through a veil of separation. They don't see what is there, they presume what is there from their assumption that they are separate. So I assume I'm separate and I assume you are. I've already made you separate by even assuming. So the separate seeker cannot see that that is both nothing and everything. It sees that as something else. That's a person, I'm a person, I have to relate to that. So it actually we impose this whole belief of separation on everything that we see. In liberation, when there is no longer anything or anyone, then everything is simply what it is. It is totally boundless. And it is totally new. Everything is new. Because everything is new. I don't know whether you know, but scientists have discovered the tiniest thing so far, so far, that scientists can measure is the quark, I understand. There's probably something smaller than that. But the quark is the foundation of this manifestation. It's in the atom. And, it, and what they've discovered is that the quark both is and isn't. So everything you're looking at at the moment both is and isn't. Everything you're looking at at the moment is both nothing and everything. Everything you're looking at at the moment is both emptiness and fullness. It is there and it isn't there. But the seeker, because they believe they are really, really something, they can only see another something. They can't see the nothing. They don't see the nothing. It's too frightening. 